What is up fellow game developers, my name is Tyler Potts and welcome back to the Muddy Wolf Studio. Now in this video we'll be creating a heart system. So as you can see up here we have some hearts. This is the game I've been making and the aim of this game is to let the bees get to the flower and stop the wasp from getting to the flower. But if you see if you hit a bee then you actually lose life. If you kill a wasp uh, nothing happens but if you let one of these wasps get to the end it will then also destroy enough for life. So we're not going to be creating this game, we're going to be creating just the heart system at the top with a couple of buttons that take away and add hearts with a little player system. So that's what we're going to get on with right now. So I'm going to set up a new Unity instance, I'm going to quit this Unity and I'm going to op open up Unity Hub and I'm going to click uh, create new and I'm going to call this Project, I'm going to, it's going to be 2D and I'm going to call this project, um, what should we say, healthy boy, healthy boy, there we go, healthy boy, we're going to we're gonna hit create and then once that is done I'll see you inside the Unity environment. Okay people, as you can see we've created this new game scene um, over here, we've got this damage button and a heal button and now we need to actually set up our heart container system, so under a canvas um, we're going to go up here and create a new empty object and we're just going to call this the heart system or I'm going to call it the heart container because it's what contains the hearts. I'm then going to set its pivot point to the top. I'm going to give it a width of about 600 pixels. Let's go into the scene view. I don't know why I'm not there already. Um, so you can see it up there. So you can see what's happening there. It's attached to the top and it's about 600 wide. We then want to add a layout grid layout group which will then define how it works so we want to say each cell space is 75 by 75 you can define what you want here on what sizes work best for your game um, we also want to say um, that it, I think it will be middle center so the child alignment will start in the middle so if we now add an image so we're going to say a UI element image you can see it starts up there for some reason there you go set you can even change it will reset itself there but you just have to update this for it to work properly which is weird so if we go back to the heart container here um you can see now there's a new image element in here but if we duplicate this you can see more we're just going in there just sitting next to each other and they're just pushing each other around but you can see there's no spacing so here we've got spacing we're going to say about 25 25 which will give it 25 spacing um to the left and the right and above and below um, the spacing above and below will only appear once we hit a new row. So if you see if we do one more, you can see it jumps onto a new row. And then you can add multiple more. Um, so just pretend these are hearts. Um, we're only going to start with three hearts. So we're just going to have three hearts in the center. Um, we don't need the third heart right now. We just need two. So we, I'm going to add some assets in here. Uh, if I can open up a finder window. Uh, I'm going to go to my games game assets and we're going to go to save the bees because it's the game we have we have this heart psd and this broken heart psd i'm going to drag those into our game and i don't think we need anything else that's fine so we have these so the image for the image one will be oh tyler please kick so we'll drag this boy into this which will be our standard heart and then we'll drag the broken heart into here and you've got a broken heart so you actually can see that's what it looks like. So up here, we're just going to rename this to Heart. And this one will be renamed to Broken Heart. Because it's broken, you know, sad. Um, so we've got those, and they will now stick. So if we add more Broken Hearts, you'll see there. If we add more Normal Hearts, although they're out of order, they are there. So we can add more Hearts. We need to turn these into prefabs so we can instantiate them. Because this Heart system is going to be dynamic. So if your character... If you pick up a heart container, for example, and suddenly you now have three hearts for your max health, you will then see three hearts along this line. So we want to make this dynamic. So we're going to make a broken heart and, and a heart prefab, which we can then reuse later on. So we've got those. Now we don't need them inside the heart container anymore. Inside our heart container, we're going to add a health system, or we're going to call it the heart system. Um, which we're going to create a new script and then inside that script we're just going to open it up once Unity is loaded. So you, as this opens up we're going to need a few default things. So we're going to need some, uh, we're going to need to basically get reference to our prefabs. And the way we're going to do this is by using the Unity inspector. So we're going to serialize 
a couple of fields. We're going to get called couple of, a couple of game objects, and the first game object is going to be the heart prefab. We're then going to copy that and create a broken heart prefab, and then. From here, we're going to basically now create a new function, which is going to be called um, uh, public. We need a public function, so we can call it from our player script, and it's going to be called for void draw heart. It just takes two parameters. One is heart, so the current heart we have, and then the max heart, which is the maximum heart we have. So how this is going to work is we're going to say, um, let's say our player has five max heart so he has five hearts he can lose so five life points and he but he only has three left so we're going to loop through all of the hearts so we're going to check how many there was initially or how many he should have and then we're going to decide how many normal hearts we need to have and how many broken hearts we're going to have so we need a for each loop first because one of the things we need to do is every single time we call this function we need to clear our transform so you see we've got transform child um, which could in transform so this is going to get all the children every single child inside of our heart systems container or a heart container and we're just going to destroy those so we're just going to say child.game object the reason for this is because if we don't destroy them every single time we call this we're just going to add enough a bunch of hearts on top of those and it'll just look really weird so we're just going to say four in. So we need to set up a normal for loop now to loop through each heart we should have. So we say we're going to start at zero and we're going to say if i is less than uh, max hole, max heart, we're then going to say i plus plus and then we're just going to say so now we need to check if i plus one is less than heart, uh, no sorry, if it's less than or equal to heart. So if every heart we have, well, plus adding one, because obviously hearts start, our hearts go from one to our max hearts, whereas we don't go from zero to our max hearts, else it doesn't make sense. So we're in here, we're just going to say game object, and we're going to call this one heart. It's equal to, or oh yeah, heart, not heart. Heart, we're just going to say instantiate. So we're going to create a new, we're going to basically instantiate our heart prefab, and we're going to call our transform so this transform dot position we're then going to give it the quaternion dot identity so all this instantiation is doing the same we're going to get the heart prefab we're going to tran we're going to instantiate it at the current transforms position and at its own rotation that's all you need to know from that we're then going to say heart dot transform dot parent is equal to transform so what we're saying is we want this heart we've just created to be a child of the heart container so it goes into our layout and then we just need to say else if it's not a um if it's not a if if we've gone past the heart so if there's how many hearts we have every other heart from now on is going to have to be in the max hearts it's going to have to be a broken heart so what we want to do is get our broken heart prefab and say it there and we can leave this all the same we don't have to rename our game object to broken heart or anything like that, but that is what we're going to use. And that is all we need for our heart system. But we need we need something to now call this function. We don't really want to call it from the start of the health function because we want our player to have its own heart system. So when we go back to Unity, we should now go to our heart container and let's drag in our prefab so we've got the heart prefab for the heart prefab and the broken heart prefab for the broken heart prefab but you didn't know that was going to happen right cool so we've got that but now we need to be able to create an empty and we're going to call this a player so this normally would be a player or whatever will hold your heart if i'm just going to reset transform we're going to add a component called the player health um, which will manage our pl our player's health again this doesn't really have much to do with the tutorial other than setting the hearts you can decide how you want to call this function but this is probably one of the ways you probably will so we have our player's hearts uh, let's remove this and in here we just need a public health or heart should i say not heart system public heart oh that's why public int heart which we're going to set to free by default we then need a max heart, which is also going to be uh, free, because obviously it needs to be free or more. 
And then we want to say on start. So as soon as our player is instantiated, uh, we're going to call our health system. So we need enough of pub or a serialized um, health um, system, heart system, HS, or yeah, HS, which we will set in the inspector, which then we're going to basically say um, HS dot draw heart. Oh, I don't call it draw heart. Draw hearts. <laughs> And in here we're going to say draw hearts. And we're going to pass through our hearts and our max hearts, which is basically going to draw this system. We're also going to need one more um, function for this, which is going to be called damage player. Um, this will be a public function, so we can call it from those buttons we've added. Obviously, it depends on how you want a damage player. And it's just going to be called an integer of um, damage. I'm then going to say if, no, I'm then going to say uh, hearts is minus equal to damage. And then we'll just say hs.drawhearts. We don't want to update our hearts because anytime you, um, anytime you change the player's hearts or max hearts, you want to be able to update draw hearts. You could do it in the update function, but that'll be calling it way too much. I'd say just call it when you damage your player. We're also going to have a heal player function, which be called heal. Heal player, and this will just be equal to plus equal to damage. Um, we need to make sure we only do this if hearts hearts is less than max hearts that then we draw the hearts so i guess we could put this whole thing in there you go and to be fair you could say along it is the player is still alive so if hearts is more than zero then we call this um we can still maybe not maybe maybe no we'll pull it here there we go. So long as the hearts are more than zero, so we're not dead, <laughs> and our hearts there, so that will just stop any like brokenness. So that's cool. So we've got those two functions. Let's go back to our uh, Unity editor. Wait for it to refresh. Let's drag in our heart container, which will have our health si heart system on it, um, and then we've got that. So first things we want to do is click start, and you will see our hearts have been drawn to the top. Now, if we change this to two, no, it's going to happen because we haven't actually, we're not checking for this changes in the inspector. We now need to set up our damage and heal functions. So again, however you damage your player is up to you. This is just the easiest way for us to do it. So we're going to drag in our player here. I'm going to get our player health and I'm just going to call damage player and he's going to lose one heart every time we call damage. Heal player is going to be the exact same, but we're going to call our heal player function instead. So player health, heal player, this will heal him by one. And now if we hit play, now if we click damage player, you can see it goes to a broken heart. Damage player again, we can heal player, heal player. We could damage him all the way down. Um, but if we can then re-heal him, you can see over on the left what's happening. So these are all being removed and re-added really quickly so you can't even tell what's happening. Uh, from performance, you might want to, if you're only going to ever have three hearts and you're never going to change it, then you might just want to create three hearts, which you have all linked up. But for now, I think that to make it dynamic, it is great. So if we just stop this now and we go to our player and we want to say, actually, we want six hearts. So we want six hearts to start with. So he's got a max health of six hearts. Then we're going to say it's six hearts. And there you go. If he's got six hearts, we can heal him back up to all six hearts or damage him. So you can see. And once he gets down to zero, you want to kill your player and end the game or however your game works. Maybe you want to die. Maybe that's the whole aim of the game. Maybe there's a boss heart. Who knows? But um, yeah, so that is how you create a heart container system, a heart system, <laughs> a dynamic heart system. So you can change and add hearts as you wish. If you want to have a max health increase here or a max health decrease button, you can. You just change these values and then obviously... Uh, carry on so guys thanks for watching this video if you enjoyed it don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and if you want to see more then hit that subscribe button because that really does help me create more videos thanks for watching guys and keep muddy and I